Animal group names that make me believe there is good in the world. A group of wild rabbits is scientifically called a fluffle and I don't care what toxic masculinity says, if I think something's cute, I'm gonna call it cute and this is freaking adorable. A group of ferrets is called a business, which means I can finally use this picture without it being out of context. A group of vultures is awake and I can't tell if this is a coincidence or a sick joke. A group of porcupines is a prickle. A prickle of porcupines. A group of sloths is referred to as a snuggle. I don't know what they pay the naming guy, but it's not enough. A gang of armadillos is a roll. A bunch of platypus is called a paddle. Also plural is platypuses, platypi for fake intellectuals, and platypeople are for anyone of culture. A group of kittens is a kindle. A group of crows is called a murder. Oh jeez. A group of ravens is an unkindness, google it if you don't believe me. A gathering of larks is called an exaltation. We started off strong, but now y'all just saying shit. A group of rattlesnakes is called a Roomba. Okay, we're back on track. A group of parrots is called a pandemonium, and considering how mean these feather bastards can be, I agree. And last, a process of an alpaca giving birth is called an unpacking. If that doesn't bring light to your soul, you probably don't have one. Follow me on Instagram, please. Well, group names that bring light to an otherwise dark reality. A group of pandas is called an embarrassment, and you know what? They sure are. A group of baboons is known as a congress. I would make a government joke, but it probably wouldn't accomplish anything. A group of pugs is called a grumble, and you know what? If my skull looked like that, I'd be mad too. Multiple narwhals in one place is scientifically called a blessing. A group of zebras is known as a dazzle. A group of alligators is called a congregation. I would make a priest joke, but only the kids would get it. I'd just be asking to get canceled. A group of squirrels is called a scurry. A group of apes is a shrewdness. And since humans are apes, connect the dots. A group of hippos is a blow. I'm not for body shaming, but this malicious tub of lard deserves it. A bunch of jellyfish is a smack. A group of rhinos is a crash. A group of pigeons is a fuck steak. That's not a fact, it's just a personal preference. A group of kangaroos is a mob, and that is one godfather of a roid rabbit. A group of hyenas is a cackle. I promise you, whoever came up with these names got paid to get drunk on the job. A group of badgers is called a set, which makes sense because this bush ferret is 100% affiliated. Animal baby names that make me think all is right with the world. A baby platypus is called a puggle. A baby echidna is also called a puggle. A little porcupine is scientifically known as a porcupet. A baby coyote is called a whelp, which is the same sound the father coyote makes when he realizes he got one of his side chicks pregnant and has zero intentions of being a presence. Elp. A baby puffin is known as a puffling, and that just feels right. A pangolin fresh out the womb is identified as a pangapup. An infant hedgehog is called a hoglet. You can't tell, but I am smiling on the inside. A baby seahorse is called a fry, which makes sense because sometimes a father eats them. A baby koala, kangaroo, wombat, Tasmanian devil, and every other marsupial is known as a joey. A baby manatee is scientifically known as a manamini, no need to google it because I 100% did not just make that up. A baby rabbit is actually a kitten, and the process of a rabbit giving birth is a kindling. I genuinely hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. If I can't make you love sharks in 60 seconds, you have every right to unfollow me. Lemon sharks will form emotional attachments with humans and even get overprotective when they see their favorite diver giving attention to another shark. Yeah, they get jealous. There's a Florida lemon shark named Blondie that'll swim up to people so they can pet him like the 8 foot 200 pound sea puppy he is. Speaking of which, a baby shark is called a pup and I dare you to try to lie to me and tell me this teething shark pup didn't make you smile. I'm trying to hide it, but I see it. The smallest shark in the world is a dwarf lantern shark that never gets any bigger than 8 inches. There's a joke in there somewhere and I'm not gonna make it. They eat krill and like their name suggests, they can glow in the dark. Sharks are intelligent enough to be trained like dogs. Gray bamboo sharks in Germany were taught to push their snout to the correct shape shown on the screen to earn food. They were also trained to navigate through a maze by recognizing certain shapes and colors on the wall. Sharks in the UK were trained to roll over and beg for food. Sharks have designated best friends. If you rub a shark's belly or turn it upside down, it goes into a trance called tonic immobility that can last as long as 15 minutes. It can also be triggered by rubbing its snout. A well, fact here, I just think this is cute. If I can't make you like spiders by the end of this video, feel free to unfollow me. Some tarantulas will adopt a pet humming dot frog and protect them from predators, and in exchange, the frog eats the insects that would eat the spider's eggs. The frog gets a bodyguard, and the spider gets a tiny god frog for her children. They use chemicals to recognize them, so the spider will grab the frog, examine it, and then release it when they realize this frog is friend, not food. The Patu de Gua is one of the smallest spiders in the world, and I defy you to tell me this isn't cute. Jumping spiders are so small that a pair of photographers were able to put water droplets on their head and have a photo shoot with them. And here's what that photo shoot looked like. If there were no spiders in the world, you would either starve to death or go broke feeding your family. Spiders eat 400 to 800 million insects that would destroy crops, so not only would there be less food, it would be much more expensive. Without spiders, a 4 for 4 would be a 4 for 40. Some spiders raise their arms and pretend to be ants. Out of the 43,000 types of spiders, less than one tenth of a percent are dangerous to people. They have tiny paws called tarsuses used to grip surfaces. I repeat, spiders have tiny paws. If you like spiders a little more after this video, you can thank me by following me on Instagram. Real quick, I want to shout out the sponsors for today's video, Dragon Mania Legends. Basically, you raise and train a bunch of dragons and then you run fades with them. 100% animal abuse and trafficking in real life, but this isn't real life, it's a game and it's a pretty good one. The link to this game is going to be in the description and that's pretty much it, let's get back to the animals. Yo, so I learned something yesterday and I need y'all to see this. 
Mountain gorillas will pound on their own chest whenever they perceive a threat or danger in order to seem more intimidating. And it took 23 trips around the sun for me to find out they do not sound the way you would think. This is now my favorite thing ever. Chinchilla facts that you didn't know you needed in life, but that's why I'm here. They have the densest fur of any land mammal, and with 20,000 hairs per square inch, most fleas that get into their fur end up suffocating. They hate water because their fur is so dense that they can freeze to death or grow fungus before they dry, so they take the world's cutest dust bath. Their closest relative is a sensei bunny, aka the mountain viscacha. Chinchillas are almost 100% odorless to the point where their little chinchilla farts don't smell at all. Every chinchilla in America can be traced back to 11 founding chinchilla fathers that came to the US in 1923. 11 chinchillas quickly became thousands and they may not be yeast but they're sure as hell inbred. It's so bad that chinchilla siblings have to be separated after 8 weeks because they will family therapy each other. Chinchillas have hops. Some can leap up to 6 feet in height so if your chinchilla is able to clear your tinder day just know somebody's lying. They scream and they're smart enough to understand that screaming will cause their owner to rush over to them so they will scream to get their attention and because they're nocturnal you can expect to hear this at 2 in the a.m. <coughs> Animal facts the healthcare system hates because it's free serotonin. Millions of trees are planted a year by squirrels that bury their nuts and then forget where they hide them. A study showed that gray squirrels will forget 74% of the acorns they bury causing more unaccounted for nuts than an NBA player with a latex allergy. Their short attention span creates homes for thousands of animals. If you fall asleep around an elephant and it gently touches you with its trunk it's because it thinks you're injured and it's worried about you. One woman fell asleep against a tree and when she woke up there was an elephant standing over her and when more arrived they gently placed branches over her motionless body to protect her. They've also been known to rush to people that were swimming because they thought they were drowning. Orcas are basically the bullies of the ocean but if Disney taught me anything there's always one person that'll stand up to a bully. Humpback whales have been known to protect smaller defenseless animals like seals by placing them on their chest where killer whales can't reach them. Other than pure kindness we don't know why they do this. And it's not just seals. A humpback whale once protected a woman from an 18 foot tiger shark. Male spiders will pluck a tune on their web in order to bag a female who is attracted by the vibrations. They've also been known to give their mates back rubs. To be fair, if he doesn't, there's a good chance she'll eat him, but you know, host. animals I would pet with zero hesitation despite the severe bodily harm they would certainly cause me. I'm 100% aware of the carnage hippos are capable of, that being said, put a baby hippo in front of me and I'll be petting it with zero regard for my well-being. At over 100 pounds, a baby hippo could probably take my arm, but if God gave me two arms with one opportunity to give a baby hippo affection, I will happily roll those dice. I really shouldn't be saying that, but I am not strong enough emotionally to say no to a face like that. Hyenas are one of the most vicious animals in Africa, and I know for a fact I have a problem because even though I've seen them play Operation with a living baby zebra, my brain processes this picture and just sees a very seasoned puppy. A homicidal puppy, but a puppy nonetheless. I envy the man that hangs with hyenas for fun because I would gladly give my left leg to do this. The problem is with a thousand pound bite force, they would take it with or without my consent. I don't know if this is sacrilegious, but I would embrace the devil with open arms if I ever got the opportunity. Even though this homicidal looney tune has the personality of a chainsaw and the diet of a land vulture. I've stand this animal for a majority of my childhood, so at the risk of my face becoming the devil's chew toy, I'm holding him first, so whatever course of action he chooses to take, I will accept. This is by far the cutest animal you've never heard of, but that is going to change. This rabbit that looks like it should be teaching a Jack Black Panda Kung Fu is actually a mountain viscacha. And despite that joke, they're not even related to rabbits, they're close cousins with a chinchilla. This sensei rodent can live in mountains as high as 16,000 feet above sea level. That's enough to give any normal person altitude sickness, but viscachas are built different. They don't need to drink water, they get all the moisture they need from the plants they eat. During mating season, males will run up on each other and fight over steep cliffs to prove to anyone watching that they are not afraid of hell. This toxic masculinity is why most viscacha groups have way more females than males. After mating, the female is pregnant for 150 days and usually gives birth to twins, and to be honest, the only reason I'm telling you that is because I really just wanted to show you this picture. They spend most of their days sunbathing and posing for GQ, but since GQ doesn't have the balls to make the climb to see them, most of this photogenic talent goes unnoticed. If you go to Machu Picchu really early in the morning, those long-tailed rabbits running around are actually viscachas just waking up. They don't speak English, but if they did, I would ask him for advice regarding every aspect of my life because he just looks like he has all the answers. He looks like he knows a thing or two because he's seen a thing or two. Animals that I desperately want to show affection but can't due to safety reasons and societal standards. Male platypus have a venomous spur capable of causing severe pain for several months, but if you told me the price of showing this adorable duck rabbit affection is a season's worth of agony, I'll reserve my hospital bed right the hell now. Incapacitating venom-induced misery might be temporary, but being able to say I hella platypus is something nobody can ever take from me. Bears are the largest land predators on the planet, but if nature wanted me to fear them as such, they should have given those ears and that nose to somebody else, cause all I see is an overgrown forest puppy that demands attention. That snoot will be booped and whatever consequences the mother has planned for me, I will live with. Actually probably not, but we're all gonna die regardless. I am going to live out this picture if it kills me, the problem is it almost most certainly will. 
I don't trust myself around honey badgers, because it is an undeniable fact that I will pick him up like a lap dog and let him decide what he wants to do about it. I am 100% aware of the exploits of this felony weasel, but put me in a room with a honey badger, I'm either gaining a friend or losing a hand, and that is a gamble I am willing to take. I will cuddle a honey badger if it's the last thing I do, but due to the nature of this furry black air force, it probably will be. They have a reputation, but I have mirror lights, we'll see who really doesn't give a sh-